Today we're going to have a little bit of fun with our iBook G3 Clamshell 466 Special Edition. This was the last and greatest version of the Clamshell iBook, and ours is in the stately, yet serious, graphite color scheme. But ours has gone, well, a little bit ugly over the past 20 years. So today, let's tear this guy back apart and see if we can't improve the looks by making it fully transparent. So stay tuned. Now, we haven't seen this wonderful machine in quite some time, but I'll link a few videos below where we unbox this from its original packaging, and also tore it apart to repair the broken power jack, and we upgraded this to an MSATA SSD. Now, I've always wanted to do the transparent mod to a clamshell, and I think ours here is the perfect candidate, mainly because the case, although very discolored and gross looking, is also very much intact, and actually I don't think there's a single crack in this. Now, some of you might not like these mods, where we physically change the case of a vintage machine, and that's understandable, but there's really no way to undo this discoloration, and if we change our mind later, we can always just add in new shielding. So I'm hoping the transparency will hide some of the discoloration and give this machine a really, really cool look. So. Let's tear this thing open and rip out some metal. Okay, we'll start with taking apart the lid because it's a lot easier to get this plastic off than to get down into the rest of the machine. So this will give us a good look at how this transparent mod is gonna turn out uh, in the least amount of time. So it's just a couple screws. You've got two Torx T8 screws on the front. Two more Torx T8 screws on the back here. And that releases this piece here and shows us our first little bit of metal shielding. And then we have four screws up underneath this ridge here. And then for the really fun part, you have to get in between these two pieces of case here with a plastic spudger to pry them apart. And we have our first bit of metal that we can remove. Just carefully peeling off this metal shield here. And then to remove the back case here, there's just four more Phillips head screws. And then the Wi-Fi antenna, which are kind of stuck in the back case here, which we can just pry out. And there's also a backlight wire which is run through a little plastic piece which is stuck to the shielding on the back here. Oh my god, it looks like an adorable alien with little floppy antennas. That's amazing. Maybe I should just leave it like this and just walk into Starbucks with this crazy alien looking laptop. So while I have the back off like this, I just wanted to point out something that I think is pretty interesting. While the whole back of the case is protected with this metal that's completely opaque, the Apple logo is actually cut out and then just covered over with a sticker. So it seems like for a long time into production, probably Apple wanted the logo on the back of the machine to glow. But at some point after they had finalized this lid, they decided to cover over that so the light wouldn't shine through. So I've actually seen people just mod their iBooks with this sticker being removed, which makes the Apple logo glow around the edges, which is pretty cool. But we're just going to remove this whole metal shield here. And you can see here on the metal shield, this Apple logo 
uh, the metal stops and then that's just a sticker covering over this pre-cut out section. So that's pretty neat. Okay, so the shielding is off and unfortunately the discoloration is still extremely apparent in this uh, rubberized coating. And I'm assuming it has to do with the adhesive holding the coating onto the plastic. Otherwise, it's just the rubberized coating itself that's discolored in this way. And I'm not sure what to do about it. So aside from just completely replacing this plastic piece here, which is definitely an option, I wonder if there's some kind of chemical process we can do to either make this all an even color or to bleach it or something. So I wonder if maybe a retro bright process would do at least something to make this look more uniform. And I don't see an easy way to take the coating off. I'm pretty sure it's just glued directly to the plastic. And yeah, you can kind of feel the rubber by pushing through these little holes here, but probably not going to come off. Let's put this back together and just see kind of what it looks like when it's installed and you can see the components through it. And then we'll brainstorm and I'll, I'll research. Maybe there is some way that somebody else has already done this. So yeah, let's put this back together. Okay, well, it definitely looks pretty cool. It's not as transparent as I was hoping it would be. And I wonder if that's just because this case is discolored and scratched and it's not just this rubber part, which unfortunately isn't really transparent at all. I do like this clear aesthetic and uh, it definitely looks cool, especially on the front of the machine. And I definitely think it'll look cool when we take the shielding off of the top case here but I am concerned what it's gonna look like on the bottom here. I have seen pictures of people who have done this mod before and it's quite transparent on the bottom and ours, I think because of this discoloration with the adhesive or the rubber or something, it's not going to be very see-through. It's gonna look about like what the front looks like right here. So I'm gonna do some research on it, see if I can think of something to do or I really don't wanna remove this coating. So unfortunately, I could not find a lot of information about dealing with this discoloration online except for one guy who had it and just painted this back to its original color. And the consensus on Discord was that this thing is just done. So in the name of science, I put this outside in a retrobrite solution of hydrogen peroxide and water and it did not have any effect. So unfortunately, it's still exactly the same pattern of discoloration. I was hoping it would maybe even out the discoloration a little bit, but no such luck. And I also realized why this plastic is a little bit less transparent than some of the other case mods I've seen. And that's actually a good thing because these iBooks are notorious for case cracks and especially around the Apple logo here and the Apple logo on the back and all the screws and everything. It's very common to see these things just completely cracked up, but this one has nary a single crack on it. And there's nothing around the Apple logo, it's pristine, and the reason is, for this very last run of iBooks, Apple changed the plastic formulation and made it much more durable and in the process, less transparent. And I actually wonder if this is the same formulation of plastic that they used in the follow-up Snow White iBooks, which were also white and had plastic shielding or actually paint that made them not transparent. But if you remove that paint from inside the case, it actually becomes transparent. So that would be interesting to compare. Okay, let's finish the mod and remove the shielding from underneath the top case here. Okay, so now we just have to be careful around the power button here and the speaker. So this should just come out. Now 
And then I have read that the speaker is kind of plastic welded into place and it does look like that's the case. So I wonder if I can cut this shielding a bit. And then I'm also, I think, gonna cut around the trackpad to just give that a little bit of a buffer on the underside. All right, and I did manage to get around the speaker without popping it out of its plastic weld, so that's pretty exciting. All right, there we go. We have officially de-shielded the upper palm rest area. So I think I'm just gonna put some electrical tape over the back of the trackpad here just to cover up the circuitry because it's actually mostly covered by plastic already, so that's fine. Now let me see if I can get this power button back in here. All right, that snapped into place nicely. And let's toss this cover back on. I'm also gonna remove this shielding over the modem here because you can see that through the now transparent palm rest and who's using the modem anyway? Okay, so we've got the machine back together and I have to admit, it's a lot more of a subtle look than I had anticipated. I mean, you can definitely see stuff through the casing and I think it does look very cool, but it's not as much of a transparent effect as I guess the older models would have been, which is generally, I guess, what we've seen online. But I kind of like it, honestly. For the way I have this machine displayed in my house, which is open like this, straightforward, it's definitely noticeable around the screen with the subtle look of the metal brackets and the PCB behind them underneath the case, and I think that looks really cool. And of course, if I do ever change my mind, it is a totally reversible mod, and probably I'd wind up getting a new back case for the screen anyway, because it's all discolored and terrible. And it's not like I ever intended to keep this machine stock anyway. There are a couple of other much more intense mods that I've wanted to do to an iBook clamshell for probably the past 15 years since back in the days of old Apple Fritter. One of them involves this guy right here. This is the iBook G3 Icebook, the computer that came out as a direct replacement for this last clamshell machine. And I'm sure you can see quite a number of differences between the two machines, but one of the most important is this screen. This is a 1024 by 768 12 inch screen, which is much more livable than this 800 by 600 12 inch screen that the iBook is stuck with. And this screen is technically compatible with this machine and this specific machine, the 466 and 366 special edition, because these have eight megabytes of VRAM as compared to only four megabytes in all of the previous clamshells. So this machine can support 1024 by 768. Now, it's a little bit of a chore to get this screen into this machine because aside from it not quite lining up with the brackets and you have to kind of finagle it maybe with some hot glue or drilling some new holes in the bracket here. You need a special cable to go from this display's connector to the iBooks connector. And that cable only came with about 12% of the clamshells that were sold, only the ones that had LG screens. And unfortunately, the screen in this one is Samsung, so it has the wrong connector. So we're either gonna have to build our own cable or more likely we're just gonna have to solder the connectors from the cable onto the connector on the LCD itself, directly onto the pads. And then with a little bit of open firmware hacking, then we can have a, a extremely livable 1024 by 768 on this clamshell iBook, which is basically the absolute bare minimum 
required to have any kind of reasonable computing experience today. Now, that's not the last mod that I want to do to this machine. So we'll just slide this guy off to the side. In this box is a package all the way from Australia. And this is actually something I am extremely excited about because this is a new old stock PowerPC G4 7410 rated at 500 megahertz and it already has a ball grid array connected to the pins, which means that in order to install this, all we really have to do is use a heat gun to desolder the G3 processor from the clamshell iBook and use the same heat gun to resolder this guy. And it's a drop-in pin compatible replacement. And not only that, but I have seen someone on the, I think, Vintage Macintosh Enthusiasts Facebook group. And she had already performed this same mod using this processor from this same Australian seller. And this only cost 30 Australian dollars, which is pretty inexpensive, although shipping was a kind of a beast. But here it is. And I have never, ever tried to do something like this, but I think we're going to give it a shot and see if we can't get into the G4 iBook Clamshell Club with the likes of Greg Hrotke from Hrotke Mods. So if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh shenanigans, including these crazy upgrades to this iBook Clamshell G3, please subscribe down below and I will see you in the next video. And a special thanks to Sorta Eclectic, Chris, and Spike, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping make this video possible.